Hello everyone, today's video is going to be so much fun. I, as you can see, got a new bookshelf. I actually got it at work. At my work, uh, we don't have, have like a home section. So I work at Urban Outfitters. We don't have a home section at ours. And so anytime someone returns a home item, it immediately goes to 70% off. So this bookshelf was only $20, which is actually insane. I am doing, you know, no spend March. So I'm not supposed to be spending money at all, but I had to really think about it. And I've been wanting a new bookshelf because I just have a lot of books and I want to be able to like display my um, like special editions of books and stuff. So yeah, I was like, okay, you know what? I cannot turn up this opportunity. Sorry, I'm getting comfy. I'm so excited that I got this bookshelf, but yeah, that's just why we're over in this little area of the room. So today I want to organize my books on this bookshelf. It's going to be so much fun. But before we do that, I have a huge book haul from the last couple of months. Um, if I have already shown these books in previous book hauls or anything, I apologize. I, I went through all my books and I was like, I genuinely cannot remember what books I bought in like the span of time between last, the last book haul and this one. But anyways, let's just get right into this book haul because it's gonna be a long one. So first of all, I got three books in the Shatter Me series. I got book four, which is Restore Me. That's what it looks like. I then got book five, which is Defy Me. And then I got the very last novella, which is, believe me, and it's nice and sparkly and pretty. This is just part of the Shatter Me series. I think I have all the books except for the very last one, the sixth book. Um, I could be wrong about that though. Next we have Sea of Tranquility. This is by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, let's just read a little bit inside about what it says. It says, the award-winning best-selling author of Station Eleven and The Glass Hotel returns with a novel of art, time, love, and plague that takes the reader from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon nearly 500 years later, unfurling a story of humanity across centuries of, or across centuries in space. Genuinely, I had no clue. Let me come a little closer. I had no clue what this book was about until right now. I just saw someone talk about this and I was like, wow, that sounds amazing. And I found it on like book outlet or something for really cheap. And yeah, it also has a stunning cover. I love that. The next book I got was Bliss Montage. This is by Ling Ma. It's just a collection of short stories. It says, um, what happens when fantasy tears the screen of the everyday to wake us up? Could that waking be our end? In Bliss Montage, Ling Ma brings us eight wildly different tales of people making their way through the madness and reality of our collective delusions. Love and loneliness, connection and possession, friendship, motherhood, the idea of home, etc. Um, I just honestly bought this for the cover because that's a really cool cover. This is on my TBR for this month, so hopefully I'll read it. I apologize if my face looks incredibly red. I just put this bookshelf together and it made me so hot and yeah, I'm just really hot right now. The next two books I got are just really cool editions of The Hunger Games. Um, I still have to get the first one. They I got these from thrift books so they're pretty dirty and I need to clean them up. But we just have um, Catching Fire. It's just this really cool foil edition and yeah, they're really beaten up but I, I don't mind beaten up books. Most of my books are gonna be beaten up because I get them secondhand. Um, so we have Catching Fire, and then I got Mocking Jay. This one you can tell has some gunk on it. But yeah, these are just so cool and shiny. And yeah, I'm gonna find the first Hunger Games book to match with it. Cause I just, I just love these so much and I've never seen them before. The next one I got is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I am so excited to read this because everybody loves it. So basically this is about a girl who is powerless. She does not have any powers in a world where you need to have powers in order to live basically. And she is thrown into these games, very much Hunger Games vibes, um, but she's thrown into these games where 
all the people with powers have to participate. Um, but obviously she's just pretending like she has powers and so it's just kind of crazy. She falls for the prince. I heard it's super romantic and beautiful and like a slow burn. The next one I got is Dungeons and Drama. This sounds like my ideal rom-com because it is a girl who loves musicals, which is me, and then like a boy who loves Dungeons and Dragons, and it's super short, and I just think this is going to be so cute. I believe it is YA, and yeah, I'm just really excited for it. I don't like cartoon covers usually, but this one will do. It'll pass, okay? The next one I got is Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. Um, that's the cover. So basically, I don't know what this is about. I just know a lot of people have liked this and I wanna try it out. There's also been a lot of people who have really hated it. So we'll see where I fall in that. The next one I have is like totally out of my comfort zone. But I've just heard such amazing things about it, and that is A Dowry of Blood. This is by S.T. Gibson. I believe this is about Dracula's wife, and I don't think, I think it might be that she, like, never even names him or something. But it's, like, written to him. Honestly, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to save this for... The spooky season, obviously, because it will be perfect. Um, but yeah, I've just heard this is written so beautifully. It's amazing. And I'm really interested in it. And then the next one I have is Keeping 13. This is just the second book in the Boys of Tom and series. I have the first one on my TBR for this month, so I just really wanted to buy this. Just in case I absolutely loved it and I had to read the next one, you know. Um, but yeah, I have that now. All right, that was the first pile of books. Now we were on to the second pile of books and I do have three piles, so yeah. Like I said, a long haul. Um, so I have a trilogy and that is the Kane Chronicles. I found this at Half Price Books for $13, which is insane. So let's just go through all of them. Um, so this is still in like the Percy Jackson universe. So you're supposed to read Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and then you're supposed to read Heroes of Olympus next, and then you're supposed to read the Kane Chronicles. So I have a while. This is the first one, the Red Pyramid. Um, these are, they take place in Egypt, I believe, and it's just like Egypt, Egyptian mythology type stuff. Uh, the next one is called The Throne of Fire. I also just love these editions. I, I, I was so, like excited when I found these and then the last one is the serpent shadow which is my favorite cover personally I just think it's stunning and then it also came with uh, a little what is this called graphic novel of the red pyramid so I think that's really cool too and I will definitely read all of these I'm so excited I cannot believe that this is my life that I found these. Another one that I got is called Anna Dressed in Blood. So this is by Ken Dare Blake who wrote the three, uh, oh, what is it called? Three Dark Crowns series. Ooh, my knees hurt. Um, but I love Three Dark Crowns. I read that, that was like my first ever fantasy series that I read when I started reading again and I just loved it so much. So I'm really excited to read something else by her. Um, I'll just read a little bit at the back. It says, Cass Lowood always knew that he would inherit the family vocation, killing the dead. An untimely and gruesome murder left a, a young Cass fatherless and barely ready to take on his mantle, but with no other choice. Uh. Now, armed with his father's mysterious and deadly athame, athame? I don't know what that means. Uh, Cass travels the country with his kitchen witch mother and their spirit-sniffing cat. They follow legends and the local lore, destroy the murderous dead, and keep pesky things like the future and friends at bay. So it just sounds super interesting. It sounds like it'll be a good time. This seems like a good uh, book for spooky season as well. I won't be reading it during that time probably because I really want to get to it soon. The next one I got is interesting because I have never read something like this in my life. And that is Spy Family Volume 1. This is a manga. Um, it's by Tatsuya Endo. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but let me read the back of this for you. It says, 
Uh, Master Spy Twilight is unparalleled when it comes to going undercover on dangerous missions for the betterment of the world. But when he receives the ultimate assignment, to get married and have a kid, he may finally be in over his head. Not one to depend on others, Twilight has his work cut out for him, procuring both a wife and a child for his mission to infiltrate an elite private school. What he doesn't know is that the wife he's chosen is an assassin, and the child he's adopted is a telepath. It just sounded so good. Too good not to buy. And so I really can't wait to get into this. Um, and we'll see if I enjoy mangas. <laughs> I really don't know if I will. The next one I got is None Shall Sleep. This is such a nice cover. This is by Ellie Marnie. Let me just show it to you. So basically, this reminds me a lot of the Natural series, which I just finished up. Um, but it says 1982, Quantico, Virginia. Two teenagers, serial killer survivor Emma Lewis and U.S. Marshal candidate Travis Bell are recruited by the FBI to interview convicted juvenile killers and provide insight on cold cases. Um, so it literally sounds like teenage FBI. And I've heard mixed reviews on that one. But yeah, I just wanted to form my own opinion on it. The next one I got, I got with a blind date with a book and that is Orange is the New Black. I had no clue that this is a nonfiction book. It, I literally just had no clue. Um, but basically this is just about a woman who goes to jail and the stories of the j women in jail, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah. <laughs> the next one I got is So Precious. This is my childhood favorite book. I can't tell you how many times I read this. And that is Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. Um, author of Stuart Little. I had no clue. Okay. But this, I literally read this over and over and over when I was a child. And I loved the movie. There was two movie adaptations and I loved them both. And I just saw this on thrift books and I was like, I should totally get it and read again. I think that would be so cute. Next one I got is like a mystery thriller and it is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This one sounds so interesting. It says, when legendary R&B artist Corey Field spots Enchanted Jones at an audition, her dreams of being a famous singer take flight until Enchanted wakes up with blood on her hands and zero memory of the previous night. Who killed Corey Fields? <gasps> It sounds so good, and I've literally never seen anyone rate this lower than four stars, so I know I'm gonna love that. The next one I have, genuinely, I can't remember if I already talked about this before. That is Super Folks. <laughs> I feel like I have talked about this, but basically this is just like a superhero story, and I believe it's about like a retired, yeah, a retired superhero. But I think it's like an older book and I don't know. I just really like the cover on that. It's really cool. I have nothing really to say about it. The next one that I have, I'm actually currently reading. I'm like halfway through it. And that is Paradise One. This is so interesting and disturbing. So this is a sci-fi thriller. It is about this group of people. It's these three people who are sent on this mission to check on this planet called Paradise One where one of the people on the mission's mother uh, has gone in retirement to live there. Um, and so on the way there, the AI kind of goes berserk. They're starting to get attacked. And I think that's all I'm going to say. It is so interesting. There is cannibalism. It's very weird. It's so good. And I can't wait to finish this video today and keep reading this. The next one I got is another short story collection. This is called Your Utopia by Bo Chung. Um, basically just a bunch of like, maybe kind of weird, kind of adorable, kind of comforting stories. I don't know. Haven't gotten very far in it yet. I need to just honestly restart the book. But yeah, it's just like little sci-fi books. And I think it looks really cute. So yeah, I'm excited to read that. The next one I got is a YA dystopian book. It's called The Program by Suzanne Young. I love these covers and they have really cool spines. And I hope I really like this book because there's like five books in the series or something. And I would love to have all, the, all of these on my shelf. Um, but basically there's like a, a suicide epidemic going on and people are going to this thing called The Program. But it, it basically wipes your memory it changes who you are completely and so it's just not a good deal but yeah so this girl's like in love with this boy and then he gets sent to the program 
And so she has to learn, or he has to, like, figure out how to fall in love with her again, even though he doesn't know her, like, I don't know, sounds really good. And then the last book in this pile is Attack on Titan, Volumes 1 through 3. So this is the omnibus version. Um, that's the cover. So this is another manga. It is huge because it is three in one. But this manga has always intrigued me because I think it's so freaky. Like they have these giant creature people, titans, and that is just terrifying. And yeah, I think I'm going to really enjoy this one. If I don't like it, I will be so shocked. All right, on to the last pile. So we have The Nursery. This is by Sylvia Molnar. Um, this book sounds so intriguing. I have had my eye on this for a really long time. So it says, a visceral and revelatory portrait of the joy and tumult of new motherhood that reveals how difficult and fragile those postpartum days can be and how vital love is to pull anyone out of the dark. I think this is gonna be like a psychological one, like kind of freaky, kind of weird. And yeah, just all about motherhood, postpartum depression, and I'm really excited for it. It's really small too. I, I don't know why I flipped it like that. It's really tiny, but yeah, I'm so happy I finally got it. The next one's actually a nonfiction and it's called Keeping Finance Personal. This is by Elise Fulmore. So I actually bought this because it was marketed on Instagram as like, how to save money when you're Nora how to save money when you're neurodivergent. And I was like, I need that because if you are neurodivergent, I have a hard time with that word, neurodivergent, you understand it's, it's genuinely hard to save money. Like, because I feel like I'm so impulsive and spending money actually like does something in my brain. And yeah, I don't know. Anyways. I thought that'd be a good read to try to figure out how to save money. The next one I have is Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. This basically follows the stories of the sorority girls who were murdered or also who survived. Um, I can't remember his name, but a serial killer's murder. And anyways, it's the point is we should not focus on the serial killer. We should focus on the victims. And we, sh yeah, that's it. I just really like the cover also. Um, I've just heard this story is so amazing and I don't know, just brings to light a lot of stuff and I'm excited for it. The next one I got is called The, L the Book of Lost Things. This is by John Connolly. Yeah, it says it takes readers through the end of innocence into adulthood and beyond in this dark and triumphantly creative novel of grief and loss, loyalty and love, and the redemptive power of stories. And there's just this guy who works at Half Price Books who recommended me this book and I was like, okay, sure, I'll try it. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what it's about. I think it's just like a dark fairy tale kind of book. The next two books I got are absolutely stunning. Um, and we have Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home. Just look at her, look at her. This is by far my favorite cover in the whole series. I love this. And then I also got Daisy Hates, um, The Great Undoing. Both these books are by Jessa Hastings, by the way. Um, that's what this one looks like. Everyone says this cover is their favorite because the symbolism on the sculpture and I guess we'll see. I still haven't started this series, but I am collecting all the books already. All right, I have two books and another series. Um, I have Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms in the new covers of the Throne of Glass series. It's because I cannot, for the life of me, find Tower of Dawn in the original cover paperback anywhere for less than $100. And so I just decided maybe I'll start collecting these ones as well. I'm still gonna keep my old covers because they're worth a lot of money and I really like them. Uh, I don't know, they just I just kind of like them more than these for some odd reason. But I'm just gonna collect both of them now, and now when I get to Tower of Dawn, I'll have it. The next one I have, I feel like I've already shown this, but this is just Rule of Wolves. It's just the second book and the King of Scars duology. And then the last book I have is Arch Enemies. This is by Marissa Meyer. I got this off um, Half Price or uh, Thrift Books, and sadly it came in the hardcover form, but I have. What is the book called? 
Renegades in the paperback form. So I have to figure out if I want to collect the hardbacks or the paperbacks. Um, but I don't want to do both. That was my entire haul. Now I'm going to collect some books and we're going to put this bookshelf together. I think I have an idea with what I want to do with a little bit of this shelf. I have barely any romance, so I think it'd be cute if I just put some romance on this top shelf. I have my entire Magnolia Parks series. So, oh, are they gonna fit? Okay, just kidding. We're gonna do it on the second shelf because they don't fit on this top one. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do, oh, hello. Okay, there we go. It was just a little bit uneven. So we're gonna put our Magnolia Park series right here. Isn't she so stunning? Oh my gosh! I love it. I think this series is so beautiful. Okay, so we'll put those there and then, hmm. I think I still wanna keep these on the side maybe. We'll see, we'll see what's gonna happen. I'll probably put Binding 13 over on this side whenever, mm. I don't know guys, this is hard. Here's what I ended up doing with the romance shelf. So we have the Magnolia Park series. We have all my cutesy little romances here. And then I put the, um, I can't remember what the series is called, but it's like Marissa Meyer's uh, fairy tale retellings. I put this series here. Then I just put Keeping 13 here. I think there's gonna be enough room because these are a little bit spaced out. So after I read Binding, or is that what it's called, Binding 13? Yeah, anyways, I'll be able to fit it right here. And I think that'll be super cute. I'm very happy with this shelf. All right, fast forward a bunch of time. I completely forgot to show you the whole process, but let me just go through all these books and show you what I did with them. So I changed the romance book to the top shelf. It's the same exact order, but I just like how it, or I liked, I just like how it looks on the top shelf a lot better than the middle shelf. And then for the middle shelf, I decided to do like fantasy books. So I have my Shatter Me series, and then I have the Faithful and the Fallen books one and two, and then just a bunch of random like fantasy books that I didn't know where to put before, but now they have a home right here. And then down here is just like kind of all the random stuff. I put like hardcover books that I read and loved right here, and then just a bunch of random books right here i have the secret history which is another book that i've already read and gave it five stars um but i'm just really happy with how this turned out i have my little mushroom up there i still have to figure out what i want to do up here but that's for another day thank you so much for watching i had a lot of fun with this video if you liked this video go ahead and like and subscribe that would mean so much to me and yeah i will see you in my next video bye